Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage. And there are three words on today's video that I want you guys to remember. First, fix. Second, clean. And third one, lubricate. They all gonna play a big factor in all the things I'm gonna teach you guys. But please do stay tuned because these are super easy hacks that I've developed over the years that you could benefit from. In today's episode, guys, I'm going to teach you how you can save lots of money by doing simple and very easy maintenance to your vehicle at home. When I tell you there's very little to be spent here, if not any at all, I mean that. So do stick around because right now we're going to drop some more of those secrets that they don't want you to know. Okay. Very first one, your car has over 100,000 miles or maybe even less, and you are experiencing a bit of a rattle in the back. Actually, we might have to get the camera closer. See if we can get this on camera here. Do you guys hear that? So as you go over a bump, All right, how do you fix that, you might ask? Well, what if I told you? A little bit of electric tape, you're gonna be in good shape. So first things first, guys, let me show you the culprit. That is nothing more, nothing less than your rear latch mechanism has worn quite substantially along with the piece down here. So the pair could set you back a little over $160, or you can, I've seen, uh, aftermarket ones for about 60 bucks but let's say hypothetically speaking you don't really want to spend that kind of money well i'm going to show you right now with this guy right there how you can get rid of that noise so this is what you do you grab a nice piece you definitely want to have um, something to cut this uh, tape with and once you got a nice little piece Careful with your fingers, like so, and this is the money shot right here, you start there, make sure it's all flush, and you start working the tape around this edge, outside edge only. I want to say two, three turns sometimes even more mine is pretty worn it has been making this noise since the car had maybe 80,000 miles but I'm gonna call it uh, something like that go ahead cut the rest of the tape put that away. this is the final result right there let's see what happens Oh, by the way, you can achieve the same exact thing with the hood. Check this out. Before. And after. You see? Super easy and effective, obviously. But let's say that after fixing the rear latch trick, you still got to rattle back here. Well, I got another trick up my sleeve. Check this out. That, my friends, can be very annoying. How do you fix that? Well, this might just be the solution. Yes, more tape. This one, though, is a little thicker. It's got felt to it. So this should absorb some of that noise. Check it out. So once, of course, you have removed your plate, what you want to do is actually grab a piece of gum and no, 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 guys. That is totally not what we're doing. Just kidding. So what you want to do is you look in the back of your plate. Oftentimes it will reveal itself, the section that's been rubbing. Not to mention it will leave a bit of a mark on the back here. So I'm going to show you a really good way to apply this tape that most likely will cover the area you need to cover. 
and there you have it guys once you have indeed cleaned this area very well what you want to do is apply that same tape in these specific areas these are the points in which the plate is in contact with your rear hatch this is of course assuming that you still have which comes from factory these two little guys so let's see what happens let's put the license plate back on and see where we're at once everything is said and done and you put it all back together tighten the screws properly as you can see here the pitch is a little different of course you can go really crazy with this but then again would you really want to let's say that after you're done with this guy and that guy you're still hearing a noise back here well i have another one up my sleeve come on let's check this out it sits right underneath here the crazy angle here right but yes guys this is actually a very well known one as you guys i'm sure know the spare tire on these cars have a chain as part of the setup for this spare tire carrier so how do you potentially uh you know when you're going over months so, or this or that to the other get rid of this nonsense it's very simple once again no tape here or chewing gum but you want to use a zip tie what you do is you bring this very last loop you stick your zip tie there and you come i'm gonna go ahead and say this guy Remember, if you ever get a flat, you of course gotta come down here and cut this off, but you can very easily secure this guy and prevent it from bouncing around and making, well, almost no noise. You know, all those tricks I just showed you guys is assuming that you have indeed already confirmed that your spare tools and jack are well secure as they should be i couldn't tell you how many times i actually came back here and the customer's concern was actually that guy being loose but as you can see i always have mine very well secured and the same story goes for this guy always make sure that the hook is in the right place because if this hook is loose yeah you don't want to hear that now do you So under the rattles, I'm gonna throw this one as a bonus. I don't know how many of you know this one, but hey, again, with tape, you can fix this. Check it out. You hear that? I think you see where I'm going with this. So on this one, the issue here is, as you can see right there, you have these two rubber spots, stoppers, whatever you wanna call it. Over time, they wear out, they mushroom, and they just allow for a gap. That gap in return causes a noise. So what do I do? A little bit of tape there, a little bit of tape there. And as you can see, the noise is gone. So the next phase of this video is gonna involve cleaning. I know what you guys are thinking, cleaning, seriously, man, why am I watching this guy's videos? I don't wanna clean anything. Trust me guys, if you keep these particular areas of your car clean at all times, you will think yourself. Because I couldn't tell you how many thousands of dollars I've seen being spent because these areas were neglected. Care to see what I mean? Let's check it out. We're gonna use the RAV4 this time around just to make things a little more interesting for you guys. Let's go. All right, so the very first spot that I wanna make sure that you guys keep clean at all times other than of course your engine bay it is nice to spruce it up every so often uh, it's your cowl area you want to come in here every so often and clean any possible debris that you might have collecting on these corners why you might ask well because when that debris goes past this area guess where it lands yes that's right you guessed it in your cabin air filter and the stuff collects in there over time why don't you want the stuff in your cabin air filter because rodents are attracted to this yes these cabin air filters are great for filtering but when you get all the stuff collected in the filter guess what it attracts also rodents and guess why you should not want rodents nowhere near this area because rodents are known for shooing up your wire harnesses and when that happens that becomes an expensive repair so guys please clean your cowls 
Cal area and do replace your cabin air filter once a year. Very next one, and we're gonna stick to the same car. If you have a compressor at home, fine. This will help you. What you're gonna need is a tool similar to this one, although it's gonna have a pointy hand to it, but that's okay. If you're at home and you don't have that, that's still all right. I'm gonna teach you a few tricks that you can do and try to do this. What are we cleaning this time around? Well, if you got a sunroof, this is a must. So let me show you what we're doing here. You wanna open a sunroof, of course, and what you wanna do is, after you get your balance, all this area over here with your rag, make sure there's no debris and clean it best you can. Believe it or not, there's a lot of debris that always builds up in there and you wanna clean this entire area, both sides, as clean as possible because you have, see if we can zoom in from here, in that very corner there, you have a drain. A little hard to see here, but I'm gonna give you guys, of course, in the corner of the screen there, a close up of it. So once you're done cleaning those uh, areas, you're probably asking to yourself, well, how do I know those drains for the sunroof are clean or not? Well, this is where a little bit of water comes into play. Get to see what I mean? Check this out. And this right here is a poor job on my part to try to show you guys where you're supposed to pour the water. The key here is that you don't pour it on the inside of the car. But now you guys are probably saying, well, how do I know that the drains are indeed unclogged? Well, guys, the water does have to go somewhere. So if you see it dripping down the bottom, you know what that means. You are definitely good there. You, my friend, just cleaned your sunroof drains at home. Oh yeah, of course. You wanna do it all over again on that side as well. And of course, guys, hypothetically speaking, if you do not see water coming down the bottom, you obviously want to stop there because you do indeed have a clogged up sunroof drain. And if you do have a clogged up sunroof drain, the one quick way that I know how to fix that is with some shop hair. You want to get the one with the pointy tip and you stick it on that little hole and you give it a few squirts of uh, pressured hair and oftentimes that will do. Uh, are there instances in which you have to take the interior apart? Yes, but come on now, let's not be pessimistic and try to tackle this one the easiest way. Where am I going with this? Oh, pressurized here. While we're still talking about this, there is another way to unclog something else while we're still clean, uh, cleaning this car. <laughs> cleaning, quote unquote. Uh, what am I referring to? Well, let's take a look underneath, shall we? Again, this is usually accomplished with pressurized air, and this would be, again, another cause for water intrusion on the inside of the car. But this time around, we are gonna go take a look on that guy. And of course, what are we referring to? We are indeed referring to the AC train. Please excuse the wind noise, guys. You obviously wanna to come to the passenger side. I went ahead and already took some clips out. They hold this guy in place. You wanna go passenger side, left side cover, undo the clips, move your cover, and what do you see right there? You get a little pointy arrow. That guy. So this is your AC drain. Uh, you want to, with it, again, some uh, pressurized hair, shoot it into this tube a couple of times. And if you do indeed have a clogged up system, you will see a lot of water shooting out of here. And that was most likely the cause for your water intrusion on the inside of the car. But oftentimes when you do see on the floor of your driveway, garage, wherever the case might be, drips of water is going to be on that corner because that is where it's coming out of. But always, always, if you have access to some shop hair, do shoot some hair into that guy. You will be very glad you did. And while we're still in the subject of cleaning, guys, there's definitely a top tip that I want to give you guys that I don't know how many of you actually know this, but I do always hit the spot at the car wash. It always collects dirt, and it is in this corner right here. So you can see, look what I just found there. There's always, always something collected there. Please. Well, I'm hoping and assuming that you guys are cleaning and washing your own cars. That's another spot that collects a lot of dirt. So if you are washing your own cars, all these comes in, come in here. And believe me, there's all these dirt that comes out of this corner. Why do you not want dirt in there? Well, I think I don't have to tell you guys that a rust is definitely a thing. 
and if you allow dirt to collect in that area that is a spot that will become prone for moisture and if you have moisture and dirt that is going to hold that moisture you are most likely going to be promoting rust so hit those spots with water and i hope you guys are washing your own cars because a really big one with these cars is that you want to go underneath and clean your frame as best as possible and those are my tips as far as cleaning guys these are small tips but they're very good ones nonetheless and the very last one i want to give you guys is the following so all throughout your car you have several hinges right this is again poor example of a car because around here all the cars are new as you can see you got several hinges throughout the car now why am i talking about hinges here and even the latch will do the same thing which is this guy right here well there is a lubricant that you can buy at your local parts store i'm going to show you in a second which one it is i would stay away from either one of these you definitely want to get the ones that say white lithium on it white lithium grease so let's go ahead grab this guy because it happens to have the nozzle i'm too lazy to go ahead and put a straw on either one of these but no preference guys what i do want you to grab is the one that says white lithium grease and this is what you do shake the can obviously and you want to get it right in between you don't have to go crazy just a little bit is more than enough and what you want to do it's the same exact thing but for all your doors you want to go to this guy ever so slightly right in between right in between you definitely want to hit this guy as well this will facilitate and make the operation of the door smooth much more smooth 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 you know what i'm saying and repeat the process on all the other three doors and that is that no more sticking doors or squeaks every time you open a door what do you got to say for yourself young man huh clean <laughs> yep somebody needs to clean his nose so now with a clean nose we are signing off right yeah we're gonna go inside because it is a little cold but i want to go ahead and tell you guys that you should be expecting the new ride on the very next episode i'm very happy to say i've left the deposit as of yesterday so it is happening and on that note what do we say jp no kicking <laughs> no, no kicking anybody <laughs> don't no. be kicking anybody out there guys don't forget to smash that like button if you haven't done so don't forget to subscribe and i will catch you guys on the next one how do you go boom <laughs> And being that I did announce that this car is eventually going to go to a new home, I figured give you guys a bonus. Again, this is something I do very periodically. If you're not sure, these are the numbers you look for. You've got to look for. So in this case, 32 psi is the number we're looking for. And what am I referring to? Well, guys, with this little guy right here, you could check and should check by all means your tire pressure periodically so let's go ahead and do exactly that if i can ever get this cap off here we go and what do we have there eh, it's roughly 35 so in this case i'm going to leave it alone but yes guys do check your tire pressures often still helping yeah uh -huh. how's that nose let's take a look at that nose gotta start them young Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Are -bye. <laughs> oh, you kicking for, tires, huh? Thanks for helping 